It's ten years now since the British aircraft industry decided to hold its annual show at the Royal Aircraft Establishment at Farnborough. Similar displays had been held since 1932, but it's at Farnborough that the show has attained its full stature. Size and variety alone distinguish it as the largest display of its kind in the world, and that's no small achievement for a national display. But it's a national display with an international interest, for Farnborough has become an established link between the industry and world export markets. This year, a record number of overseas visitors came to look at this export shop window, over 7,000 of them. Already in 1958, almost 50% more of the industry's products had been sold overseas than in the same period in 1957, itself a record year. Let's have a more detailed look at the aircraft on show. The Westland Westminster in its first public appearance. One of the largest helicopter projects ever undertaken in Britain, this version is an aerial crane for heavy loads. There's tremendous overseas interest in the ferry Rotodyne. The first order from Canada could well mean another success story like that of the Viscount. Our cameraman gets his share of the reflected glory as he photographs Britain's most successful civil airliner. Now here's something which isn't yet for sale, but which is attracting widespread world interest. It's the short SC-1, a research vertical takeoff machine. It's a design to study the transition between hovering and forward flight. A significant machine pointing to the future development of flight. Farnborough's a flying show, and I expect you're waiting to see some, highlighting the service's contribution, Seahawks of the Royal Navy. The flying teamwork of these mass displays is one of the most memorable features of the show. Jumping grasshoppers must have inspired this bouncing baby, the fairy ultra light, a two-seater runabout. Its handiness is shown by the ease with which it takes off and lands on a moving lorry. With its first flight only a month or so earlier, the Saunders Row P-531 is Britain's latest helicopter. It's a five-seater general purpose machine. Another Saunders Row product, the Skeeter, seen here with the 531, has been bought by West Germany. The Westland Wessex, in production for the Royal Navy, is a very advanced anti-submarine helicopter. Have you ever seen a helicopter do this before? Here's the Westminster from the same stable. Looking like some predatory dragonfly, it's powered by two Napier Elan turbines. This is the utility version, which can lift a load of over six tons. As a passenger or troop transport, it has seating for 46. A really neat piece of engineering. Another Napier unit, the Gazelle, powers this new helicopter, the Bristol 192. Mechanics cover the air intakes, leaving only one power unit in action. Both engines being synchronized, it's possible to drive the two rotors on one engine. As Europe's largest military helicopter, this safety factor is a big consideration. One of the brightest stars in the Farnborough firmament is really two machines in one. Fabulous is a well-worn word, but the fairy Rotodyne gives it a new significance as the world's first vertical takeoff airliner. With the rotor idling, it flies like a fixed-wing aircraft. For takeoff and landing, compressed air from the two turboprop engines is ducted to pressure jets on the rotor blades. It's among the most dramatic machines ever shown at Farnborough. More conventional, but with its own specialized contribution, is the Auster Alpha. Here, fitted out as a crop sprayer, this low-price aircraft is adaptable to a variety of uses in a variety of climates. 
hunting aircraft present the latest version of their Jet Provost, in production for the Royal Air Force as the world's first basic trainer for jet pilots. By replacing initial training on piston engine planes, jet pilots reach a far higher standard faster. Here's a slow roll by numbers. The docile Provost is on the pilot's side all the time. Another easy handler is the Folland Nat, a single-seater lightweight designed as an interceptor and strike fighter. The Nat features ease of maintenance and cheap running costs. In fact, it's a jet fighter on a shoestring. Another service machine is the Fairy Gannet for the Royal Navy. In this version, the lump under the fuselage conceals a radar scanner. The plane will be used from aircraft carriers to extend their defensive radar system. By closing down one half of its turboprop engine, its flying endurance is increased. Now let's step up the speed with the well-named English Electric Lightning, or P-1 as it used to be called. It's an all-purpose fighter ordered by the Royal Air Force. Its Rolls-Royce Avon jets give it a top speed of around 1,500 miles an hour, while it can be fitted with a rocket engine for high-altitude flying. Fleet air arm scimitars in action. Hawker hunters have been adopted by the air forces of Belgium, Sweden, Denmark, Peru, Iraq, Holland, Switzerland and India. This is a Mark 8 two-seater, a special version ordered for the Royal Navy. Our cameraman catches a close-up of a Javelin Mark 7. Although a fighter, it carries a heavy armament of cannon, rockets and fire streak guided missiles. Guided missiles are a priority in Britain's defence programme, so naturally they're featured at Farnborough. The Bristol Bloodhound is a surface-to-air anti-aircraft weapon. With its clutch of booster rockets, it looks formidable enough even here on its launching platform but we can get a far more impressive idea of its capabilities if we watch a film of Bloodhound on the scent. The boosters are discarded and the four ramjet engines take over. A radar beam projected from the ground is reflected from the target to a receiver in the missile. Bloodhound homes on this reflected signal. Here's the result. Quite a performance, especially as this missile had no warhead. Black Knight is a ballistic rocket designed for research purposes. During this Farnborough show, we were to hear the dramatic announcement reporting that Black Knight's first flight in Australia had been an unqualified success. The single-stage rocket had shot into space right up to satellite height. One purpose of the exercise was to study re-entry from outer space. Now for Britain's latest warplane, the first of a new type. It's the NA-39, and as you'd expect, it caused a great stir among the Farnborough audience. It's a low-level naval strike aircraft, fired by two Jaren Junior turbojets and was designed as a carrier-borne aircraft. In contrast, and further stressing the variety of planes at Farnborough, here's Hunting Percival's president, a passenger and freight transport. Britain's supremacy in the civil airline field is largely due to machines like the Vickers Viscount, the world's first turboprop airliner. The Viscount's success story is written in many languages, for some 350 are in service in 30 countries all over the world.
By all accounts, another success story is about to begin with the Haviland Comet as the title. No civil airliner has undergone a more intensive testing program. This version is the 3B. Notice the effect of reverse thrust from the four Rolls-Royce Avon jets as the huge airliner touches down. It uses very little runway, surprisingly little for so heavy a machine. Now, the Comet 4. Soon after the Farnborough show, a Comet 4 completed the trip from Hong Kong to London in just over 16 hours. A record for the distance. The Vulcan V bomber, another big fellow. But watch how responsive it is. The Vulcan was the world's first four-jet Delta Wing bomber. And it's a mainstay of Britain's V bomber defense force. This latest version, the B-2, gives greater range, altitude, and performance. It's armed here with the powerful standoff bomb, which can be launched from well outside hostile defenses. Another of the V-bombers, and the biggest of them all, is the Handley Page Victor. It certainly looks businesslike to judge from the sinister expression on its face. As a finale to this Farnborough show, let's join the famous Black Arrows of Treble One Squadron, a Royal Air Force team flying Hawker Hunters. 22 aircraft looping the loop. If you don't believe it, watch the ground turning over. So another Farnborough show is over. But for the industry who presented it, another year's work lies ahead to improve the breed. There's a great challenge to face. But this is a great industry. Thank you.